Yeah. So I'm sitting here um, amongst some of the plants in my herb garden and it's one of my favourite things to do and it's a really important thing to do, particularly when you're training to be a herbalist and as a herbalist, is to take the time with the plants, to sit with them, to get to know them, um, communicate with them and see what sense of their medicine that you get. Um, so you can sit in meditation, um, you can feel their energies. You know, we also smell things. We look at their colour. We look at how they're formed. Um, we taste them. And we see how that taste affects us in our body. And a really lovely way to do that is to um, pick some fresh plant material and just go make a simple cup of tea and then bring it back to the plant and sit with the plant whilst you're drinking your tea and see at first how does this tea smell? What does it taste like? How does it feel in your mouth? And pay attention to your body as it goes down your throat and, and into your stomach, into your digestive system. And just get a real sense of what it's about. You know, what, what's the medicine that the plant's offering to you? And in this way, we build up what we call a, our Materia Medica. And we build up a good, solid group of plants that we've been almost called to. You know, a lot of plants um, suddenly become very visible to us and very attracted to them. And, and in this way, we can really learn their medicine. And um, a great friend of mine, who's also a herbalist, always says it's better to know a hundred things about one plant than it is to know one thing about a hundred plants. And these profiles, these monographs, will form the basis of some of the herbs you find yourself using the most in your practice when you've completed your training. And I have many favourites, um, one of which is yarrow, um, huge connection with yarrow and burdock, burdock root. And I'm, I have a very, very full herb garden, but I can assure you I have all my favourites here. Um, the galega, the goat's root, um, self-heal that we were using this morning. Um, wood betony, so Stachys platonica, skullcap, valerian. Um, I also planted some viola odorata this year, some sweet violets, so I hope that they will continue to grow and expand in the herb garden. Um, and this, this herb garden itself came about um, when I moved here. There was a lot of brambles, there was a lot of docks. There still is a lot of nettles, but we love nettles because they're so useful. And huge amounts of brambles covering so much of the space. And I took a whole year virtually to just to see, to get to know the place. What did the place want? What did the soil want? What, what was this space, this earth, this garden looking for? Um, and it didn't want to be completely cleared back, mown down um, and made very formal. Although there are some formal areas because we had to have a rabbit proof fence. Um, but we, we cut through, we cut pathways through the brambles um, because what it very clearly wanted was to have, have the land work, you know, to, to be productive but also to have large amounts of space uh, left to nature to form habitats. Um, we've got all sorts of things here. We've got mice, dormice, um, squirrels. I think everyone has squirrels. They dance on my roof. Um, I've seen a weasel. And one of my favourite things to do at night in bed is listen to the owls. Um, 
in Parliament talking across the river. It's one of the most beautiful things. And then we have a lot of birds of prey as well. And you know, it's amazing just watching them swooping down um, and being such an elemental part of the place. Um, so the importance of learning the herbs um, is just so crucial to to studying herbal medicine. Um, they are our allies, they're our friends, um, they, they're the medicine, um, but actually they're the real teachers, they teach us so much.